Okay, I'm going to get to work on the uh, carburetor now. This is a VM, my carb, VM28 for the uh, 500cc engine. I believe the uh, 350s have VM26 as my carbs, but uh, it's basically a copy of a uh, Makuni uh, VM model, VM28 model. I've never had any issues at all with this carburetor, 26 years. Uh, the only issues I've had is uh, it's been uh, getting a bit hard, running rough, not wanting to aisle, so very dirty. Uh, when I opened, uh, when I took this off the engine, I saw that it was just full of oil, full of dirt, like this is extremely dirty. And what had happened was the uh, air filter was just clogged and full of crap that had come over from the uh, crankcase vent uh, catch can. So uh, I've rerouted that now and I blocked that off on the, I'll put a new filter on so once I clean the carburetor, I should uh, I should be okay, should be good to go. But yeah, really nice nice little carburetor, really simple, uh, easy to adjust. You've got the uh, air screws, the uh, throttle screw, and anyway. So we're gonna I've cleaned it up now. I've taken some Varsol and cleaned the outside of it just to get off the worst of the dirt. Before we get into that, I just wanted to quickly talk about this little guy here. So uh, this is the uh, bracket for the uh, air box. So when I went to take the uh, air box off, it was split, it was broke. And uh, it, it, it's made, it's got kind of a elongated hole in it. And uh, I guess just over time it had cracked and split. So uh, I was like, I don't have a welder, but I do have uh, some nice little JB weld. So and I've used JB weld on aluminum with lots of success. So for this guy here to back it up, what I did was I just put a washer in here. JB welded it to it, left it overnight so that it's now it's solid and then I came out today and now I filled in all the gaps around the washer and on the back and uh, smoothed it out a bit so now it's in the process of drying but uh, once that's done I'll paint it all up, I'll paint it black uh, and give it a bit of touch-up paint and uh, we should be good to go. The only disadvantage with doing this is the stud that they used to go over for this also goes over and is the bottom stud for the uh, battery box and catch can and it's just long enough to get the nut on there's not even enough room for a washer so now that I've added a washer it's too short so I'm gonna have to take that stud out and put in a, a stud that's uh, maybe another uh, five to ten millimeters longer long enough to catch the nut with this uh, washer in there but I should be okay so anyway uh, they're not super expensive from Hitchcock's. They, I think, they're only like seven pounds, uh, so uh, not super super expensive. But I can I can repair this, and uh, if it if it does break again, then then I will buy a new one. But for now, I think this will I think this will hold with the j amount of JB weld I got on this. Okay, let me just move that over here, get that out of the way. Okay, so let's let's start taking this guy apart. So, my flashlight, I'll just show you something quickly. Your uh, throttle screw, if you can see in there. You see that the end of the uh, throttle screw protruding into the uh, chamber there? That's tapered. So, you'll see when I take it out, but what it does is it, uh, it catches your slide. And uh, here you go, this part here. It goes into there and there's a little bit of a, an incline, there's a little incline there cut out. And it'll, as you screw it in, it pushes, it pushes the throttle uh, slide up a bit and that'll increase your idle just uh, by lifting up the main jet a, uh, needle a little bit. But your uh, idle circuit is really governed by the uh, pilot screw. So even after cleaning, I took some Varstyle to it, you can still see the amount of dirt that's in there. There's a lot of oil, and so I'm going to take this apart. I'm going to give it a good clean with the carb cleaner. I've, got, I've actually got carb cleaner for this, so that'll do it up nice. The Varsol was just to get a lot of the muck and the dirt and the crap off of it. Uh, one other thing I did was uh, I, I cut some new hoses for the overflow and for the drain. Uh, the one on the bottom and the one on the top. The old ones you can see are all pretty stiff and yellowed. So I just have some Tigon material here and I just went alongside and cut them to length. So when I go to put them back on, I'll have some new hoses. 
Okay, so let's get to uh, taking this guy apart. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the throttle screw. Now this is going to spring behind it. So just take that out. There we go. And I'm just going to clean that up, but I mean that doesn't govern any flow. That just pushes in, pushes into the slide into here and just kind of ramps this up as it goes in. Okay, so I'm going to put that over here. And then uh, next, I'm going to take out the air screw. So the uh, air mixture screw. So typically this is set, uh, at least it was on mine, you uh, put it in all the way and you don't reef down hard on this. Just when it stops, it stops. And you come out one full turn. And uh, then you check, you check your idle and, and adjust, adjust your idle screw according to that. Between one and one and a half turns is what's recommended. And uh, I've done some uh, plug chops with that and I've never been running too lean or too rich it seems to be just the right mixture but that ha that will change as your carburetor gets dirty and you may have to adjust this which is where I was at with this guy here so oops okay so take this guy out now this guy Take this out. Has a little little o ring. Look at the dirt on that. Holy smokes, lots of lots of dirt and crap on that. There's a little o ring. The o ring looks to be in good shape. So I'm going to do my best to preserve that. And usually when I put carbs back together, any of the o rings, I usually put lithium grease on. Just to, uh, I mean, just to, uh, uh, on the end of my finger, just to coat them. I don't put a big blob or anything like that, but just enough to coat them. I find that the, the lithium grease is better than the petroleum grease. All right, I'll set that aside. I thought there was. Yes, there is. There is a spring. I thought there was a spring in there. Pretty sure there's a spring. be mistaken maybe there's no spring okay I thought there was a spring maybe not but all right anyway so that's that and uh, I'm not going to take off these uh, these guys here for the overflow the, uh, the little nipples there for those I'm going to leave those on <clears throat> but I am going to take off the uh, uh, plunger here for the uh, enricher circuit that's going to come out. So, is that a nine millimeter or ten? Uh, ten millimeter. Give me a second. I'll grab my. Oh, here's my ten millimeter right here. Grab my ten millimeter. Oh, it's not even a ten. It's bigger. It's even bigger than that. It's a twelve. It's a twelve. Twelve millimeter. There we go. Okay, sorry about that. The camera cut out on me for some goofy reason. Anyway, so we'll take this off. And uh, how much there is a little spring, so just going to be careful with this. Uh, just going to clean that up a little bit, burnish that. But uh, there's nothing, there's no orifice there, there's nothing to really clean, so or uh, nothing to have to clean out. So we'll just clean that up a little bit. 
put that over there for now. And then there's an O-ring in there. Doesn't look too, too dirty in there. That's the thing, you got, it doesn't take much for uh, a carburetor circuit to give you grief. So I'm just going to pop out that O-ring. Put that over here with uh, this guy. And there we go. Alright, so, throttle, air screw, <clears throat> excuse me. And we got the uh, <clears throat> enricher plunger out. So next, I'm going to take off the uh, bottom here. You can access your main jet with this. This is a 17 millimeter nut. And that's the other nice thing about these carbs is everything's metric on these guys. So, there we go. These don't have to be reefed on hard. Just have to be on tight enough to not vibrate off. They've got a uh, like a fiber gasket underneath. Good shape. There's my there's your uh, the main needle jet. So this one's got a what do I got in here? I got a 125. I'm trying to remember. I think it came with a 110 when I uh, bought the bike. But what I did was I uh, changed out the uh, is exhaust silencer to a shorter muffler. So when I did that, I uh, went up a size on the main jet to the 125, and I went up a size on the pilot from a 25 to a 27 and a half. So that doesn't look too bad, but it, that's going to get a cleaning anyway. So next, we'll pop off the bottom bowl here. Ah, there we go. So far, so good. Everything's cooperating, so let's see. key is when you put these things back together, everything's an aluminum alloy or a pot metal, you know, like whatever they got inside. You don't want to be overly hard with it. You just, you know, put the uh, fasteners back in and get them on tight, but don't over, don't overdo it. It's not the time to see how strong you are and torque these things to death. Oh. These guys out of here. Now, the other thing that I do, and what I'm in the habit of doing, is uh, when I'm finished with the bike, and the bike always uh, is parked inside, I always have it inside a garage. Uh, when I finished on a ride, I come home. And uh, just as I turn into my street, I turn off the petcock <clears throat> so that when I get to my driveway and I open up the garage door and I get the bike inside, there's, it's burned off. It's able to burn off what's inside the, inside the bowl. And I always park the bike with the bowl empty because, you know, I might be going out the next day, but it might be a few weeks or, you know, even if it is a few weeks, you're still going to get some varnishing taking place in the bike or in the carburetor. So uh, I just got in the habit of uh, draining this all the time. I use up all the gas and then it's never going to really accumulate a problem with varnishing. And now of course it's winter time here so I haven't ridden the bike for over a month uh, since late November. Oh geez what am I saying? That's two months I guess. So <laughs> I haven't ridden the bike for around two months. So uh, you know if I had left gas sitting in here it would have been a bloody mess. There you go. So you just, just lightly tapped it Pop loose. There we go. Oh yeah. Let me get the let me get the flashlight on that so you can see it a little a little more easily. Oh, where are you? There we go. So you can see just a little tiny bit of dirt in the bottom, but uh, by and large, pretty clean. So that's that's from not 
leaving the bike sitting. And I'm also always use a, a, a filter as well. There's the filter that comes with the tank, but that's just like a screen really. I always have an inline filter and I change that fairly often, at least once a year, they're, they're cheap. Uh, so yeah, I change those out. So that's the bowl. Now let's have a look at the, the carb itself. It looks to be in great shape. Okay, there's the pin that came out. Yeah, the, the floats look good. So I'm going to just put the floats. I've never had a problem with this overflowing. I, I, I always test them when I've got them open. So I'll just get a small container with some water in there and just put the float in and make sure it doesn't, doesn't sink or doesn't bubble, but it looks to be fine. Then the trick with these guys too is when you're taking them out is uh, be careful not to bend the tang there. That's uh, what adjusts your uh, bowl uh, level height. As you bend the tang down in this direction, it's going to push on the, it's going to push on the, uh, <clears throat> or allow the, allow the, the uh, needle valve to come out a little bit more, and that'll let your uh, your float go a little higher. So it'll, it's how you adjust the level in your bowl. But I've never had a problem, so I'm not going to be adjusting it. See the tang? It just sits there like that. Let me see if I can. It's probably a little easier there. So yeah. Nice to see brass. You get used to working on like uh, newer engines, Briggs and Stratton and that sort of thing, and they've all got plastic floats. All right. So the gasket looks to be in good condition. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna play with that. I'm gonna leave that alone. And there's the, there's the needle valve and it's in good shape there's no no pitting no damage to that so we're going to take that there so the pilot the pilot sits in here and there's the main so I'm going to uh, take them out and I'm also going to take out this guy here and let's see that's going to be a bigger one it's, Is that a 10, really? Oh, I'm surprised. I wouldn't have thought that was a 10. But it is. There we go. I had to be careful. I didn't want to torque on that and, and knock off these posts. So, there we go. And there should be, yeah, there is. There's a little fiber washer underneath, underneath here. There we go. See? Fiber washer. That's pretty clean. Boy, that's a thin, that's a delicate fiber washer. Be careful with that. Okay. Yeah, I'm not seeing any specks of dirt inside there, which is uh, uh, coming in from the fuel line from the carburetor or from the gas tank. So that's a good sign that, uh, you know, my fuel is clean. Okay, now let's get this guy out. This is the, you know what? I'm gonna use the broader screwdriver. There we go. So this will be the main jet. And I can, uh, I, know, I know you're not gonna be able to, you guys aren't gonna be able to see it, but I can see through that quite clearly. It's that's pretty good, pretty good. But now I was having problems with the idle. So the idle jet. Why is this thing not coming? Come here, you. Good grief. Okay, the idle jet is what was giving me the grief. So I definitely want to get that guy out. So let me get one of my little baby screwdrivers. Oh, you know what? I got one right here. Got one right here. It's long, but I got one. Sorry, I'm picking this up because I'm trying to see in there. I think I might get one that's a little bit wider than that. I think this one will do.
there's my pilot jet. Jeez, and when did I do this? 97, 96 or 97 I put this in, so. It looks, looks okay. I can see through, it's got the two holes and hole in the center, but still gonna clean her up. And it may not just be the jet that was giving me the grief, it might actually be the passages inside the, the carb body. So now I've got everything out that I need to get out. <clears throat> uh, and uh, I did see a bit of dirt here. Ooh, that's some bad nonsense there. Okay. So uh, anyway, that was at the bottom of the, where the main jet went. There was, there was some dirt there, and I was quite, quite surprised. So I'm going to blow up into the, uh, into the throat here with this, with the carb cleaner, and give this a good clean. So now the thing is just going to be to uh, take your carb cleaner, get everything all clean, get it all, all cleaned up with the carb cleaner, go at it in here. I've got some toothbrushes. I'll brush that and get this oil residue out of the carburetor throat. And uh, here, use, there we go. I'll give you some light. Get that all out of there. And then to uh, get in here and spray in here with the carb cleaner, get through there and then blow through with air. So you end up, I always end up blowing everything through with air. And now that I've taken out the O-rings and the gaskets that I need to get out, uh, I won't lose anything. But just as a, as a bit of habit, I always work in my oil pan or in a, in a, a pan with a, a little bit of height to it when I'm blowing in. That way if something comes out, I can hear it I can hear it hit the pan, but it also tends to catch it, slow it down, and keep it from going off in, into the garage somewhere where it's going to get lost. But uh, yeah. Then after I get done, I'll, uh, everything's all clean, put back together. I'll just put this on the, before I go, actually before I go and put this together, I put this on the buffing wheel and just buff everything up, get it a little bit shinier. Do the uh, do the top here. Oh, and I'm going to take uh, take apart the slide here too, and check the 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 uh, the needle. As a matter of fact, why don't I do that right now? I wanted to check the position of the uh, washer on the needle. So this guy here has two flat screws that hold this. In this plate, in there we go. These are uh, oh, I'll back up a little bit just uh, so we go over that. The uh, cable goes for the throttle. The cable goes down in there in the center and then moves over. You see how it's uh, there we go. You see how it's uh, slotted. The cable moves over to the side there and holds itself in. The uh, spring here it is. The spring. Goes, has gone over that, the cable's going down through here. But before you put the spring in, you've got this little plate. Where'd that guy go? Where'd my little plate go? Oh, here it is. So this little plate here, this goes in over, uh, over that and holds everything in. So this has to come out in order for you to get the uh, cable free because it won't allow the cable to move over into the uh, center position. So it's a bit of a trick when you're when you're taking this apart. You've got the got the cable going through the top of this, and then you've got the spring around the cable. So you got to kind of with one hand compress this spring and get a needle nose plier under one of these tabs. Well, the tab that's on top, and you just pop this out. Let's just take this out, and then you're okay. Then you're able to maneuver the cable over to the center and take it out and then you're good to go. So a little bit of a little bit of a trick to, to taking it apart, but not super super hard. Okay, so let's get this going. screws for that. Oh, there we go. So there's the piston on the inside. 
That's really dirty. Oh man, that's that's not that's got oil residue on it. There's little bits of little bits of dirt. So definitely got some work on work to do on that. This is going to be polished up and cleaned up. That's going to be able to move nice and freely. And uh, yeah, the jet itself has got some residue at the top. Interesting. The uh, the washer's in the middle position. I'm kind of surprised. I thought it was up higher, but it's actually in the middle position. So I'm going to leave it there because that's where I wanted it to wanted it to be anyway. Uh, let me have a look here if I can show you that. See, it's uh, there's five slots at the top there, and that washer dictates how high up the needle sits. So it uh, when you when you pull on the throttle and the throttle goes up as high as it will go. This will, this will end up uh, uh, stopping it. This will be like, oh, can't go any higher than this. If you move it down one or two, it'll allow it to go up a little higher, which of course will affect your fuel economy, but it'll allow you to get a bit more fuel into the engine and perhaps go a bit quicker. But this bike, this bike definitely isn't about speed to me, so I'm just going to leave it right there. The middle position is what I wanted, so that's gonna, that's gonna stay. That's pretty interesting. Anyway, so that's that. So the carburetor's apart now, and now comes the job of cleaning everything. So I'm not going to show you all that. I'm not going to show you the reassembly. I mean, the reassembly is basically the re reverse of the of the uh, disassembly. But uh, yeah, my carb McCooney copy of the uh, VM28.